but I'd like you to give a warm welcome for our next director of Spiritual Life, Todd Clayton. Something that you'll learn about me the next year is that I'm all about context. And so, before we start reading, I just want to explain to you what's going on right before we read. Paul, this letter to the Corinthians by Paul, and he's just finished a section about um, how they've completely nailed how they're supposed to be um, dealing with uh, women and speaking in the church and how when they're speaking to cover their heads. And he's just like, man, you got that, and I commend you for that. And then. We get to this next, next passage. It's in 1 Corinthians 11. If you want to follow along, I start in verse 17. So he's just commended them, and he says this. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. No doubt there have been differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. When you come together, it's not the Lord's supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anybody else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. We're going to take this in three chunks. That's our first chunk. So as you've just heard, Paul is frustrated, really frustrated, because he's given instructions to this church at Corinth about how to take the Lord's Supper. And they've completely forgotten. And they've completely gone the other way. And so, to help you understand what's going on here, I'm going to draw a picture. Um, another thing you'll learn this, this year is that I'm really good at art. And so, <laughs> so just bear with me. Um, so, pretend you're a bird. Uh, and this is, this is a house. Uh, something about the early <laughs> Something about the early church is that they didn't meet in, in buildings like we have, but they had houses um, of members of the church where they'd meet. So this is a house of someone in the early Corinthian church. And the way it would work is like this. Is you'd have this house, and you'd have a division on the middle. And here you'd have bedrooms. So we'll put rooms. you got bedrooms. you got like a fountain. And uh, you got a door right here. Okay? There's a door right here. Following? Are you following? Okay. So this is the public area. We'll call this public. And then back here, you have a table, a, a feast table. You got grain for plants. So back here we've got gardens, <laughs> and, and we've got this big table. And we'll call this the private. Private. Can everyone read that? Can everyone read that? Public private. Okay. And then at, the, at this door, this entryway, we have a person, um, and, and this was a servant that was hired by the family, or. Um, a slave who was owned by the family, and he would stand at the store. And so the way they would work, the way it would work is this: is um, in the private area they'd have these feasts and they'd eat together in this back area, and in this public area they'd congregate and they'd sleep. And so um, what the church had done is they would they would call the rich people and they'd be like, "Hey, we're going to get together around five, um, around midday, around around evening, and we're going to eat together." And they they let all the rich people know like. Come on, we're going to eat. And so they'd, they'd meet in this private area. And so they'd walk through, they'd meet the servant, and the servant would be like, okay, you're, you're good, you're rich, you can, you can come and eat with us. And then the poor people, they'd say, hey, we're going to meet around 6.30, we'll, we'll, we'll have communion then. And so these, these people would come, and they would eat, and they would, they would be full, and they'd get drunk, and they'd be happy. And they'd invite only rich people, because the rich people could then invite them back to their home. And so we have this private area where these rich people are eating and, and fellowshipping and, and getting drunk. <clears throat> And then we have this public area where the, the poor people would come and they'd wait. And they'd come to the servant and be like, you, you can't come back here. Like, they're eating. You're not welcome. And so there'd be this group of poor people here. And then they'd meet for the Lord's Supper after, after these people had eaten and were taken care of. And so when Paul talks, he says, when you eat, um, you come together. Or when you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anybody else. One remains hungry, the poor. Um, another gets drunk, the rich. And we have this distinction, it's public-private. And I'd never really been confronted with this until this summer. And, and I think I'm going to do another drawing to help you see. 
So I, I worked as a worship intern this summer at my home church in, in Palo Alto, and I get there early Sunday mornings and get ready for the service, like 6 o'clock, like early, because I'm a morning person. And so this is kind of how our church looks. Again, you're still a bird. Here's our church. <laughs> and these, these are our parking lots. There are three parking lots. And so I come in, and I'm driving. And I drive into the parking lot, and I park. Okay? I'm parked. Parked. And I get out of my car, and I've got all my stuff, my guitar, and my... I get song sheets and, and everything, and I, I look over, and over here, there's someone sleeping, and I see, like, the blanket and the brush, and, and she's sleeping in this, this area that I, I can't really see, I can't make out her face, but I see there's a person there, and so I go over, and I, like, just look, but she's asleep, and I don't want to wake her up, and it's six in the morning, so I was like, sleep, and so I go in, get ready, ready for service, and then I'm leaving that morning, and sure enough, in the back row, there she is, she's, she's um, in the service, and so I, I go up afterwards, I introduce myself, I'm like, hey, my name's Todd, she's like, hey, I'm Ina. And, and so we get to know each other over these next couple weeks, and, and this second or third week we have communion as a church. And, and we come together, and the, the elements are at the front, and we come and, and, and eat as a, as a body. And Ina comes as a part of that. And then after service is over, we drive away and watch Ina walk down the street. And, and this is the first time that, it, that I was like, jarred and, and was really confronted with this issue of someone in our congregation not not being cared for. Um, she didn't have food, she didn't have a home, and and I this, this slammed in my face, like God forbid our public her public streets interfere with our private me meal after con after service. And I, and I don't think any of us had that intent, but the way we were acting separated us so profoundly. And um, that's scary to me. It's scary to me. And so Paul says to them the supper you're having is not the Lord's. You can have it all you want, but the supper you're having is not the Lord's. And so he continues um, in this next section to, to kind of refresh what the Lord's Supper is and why they have the Lord's Supper and why they gather for this. And so he says this. 